So does everybody know what we're going to do? No, I think somebody needs to Great. explain. Great. Scott, you can right. see. Here's what's going to happen. We've gotten, we, we got the scoot up. This is driving me crazy. I'll be squatting the whole time. <laughs> so we got some videos together, and we decided what we do is a live Talk version of our show here. And so what we're going to do first is for the next 50, 45, 50 minutes, we'll do that. We haven't seen these videos yet. I cut them out. Right. What usually happens is Greg goes, okay, here's what we're doing. I'm like, okay, we'll send me the, and he'll find the, the times to cut out of the videos. If it's three hours long and he goes, go to one hour and 26 minutes and 10 seconds to this, to that. And then I'll cut those out and put them in a little pile. And then when I throw them on, we all watch them, right? So usually we have, we can at least watch them once or twice before we come in. But we haven't seen these yet. We haven't looked at these in, in full yet. Greg watches them with no sound. And, and on, twice the speed. Yeah, double speed. So that's what we're going to do first. Then after that, we're going to have four people from you guys come up. And you're going to do what we do. We're going to play you a different video, a different group of videos. And you're going to tell us what you see. So the first video. The second video, we're getting four more people. Same thing for the third video and the fourth video and the fifth can, video. Can I add something? For clarification, two separate tapings. This first one is us doing a show you yeah. watch. Then we'll stop, we'll reset, and we'll do it so that we bring up people from the audience to answer a video. How's that? Yeah, yeah. and then that'll be after a break. We'll do yeah. our show. Yeah. We'll have a break. But you're here for a show. We'll first live show. taping. Yeah, yeah we'll do your house. And don't forget, don't forget to uh, hit that subscribe yeah. button down right back here. <laughs> right and like, us. like, like. I'm not going to do it. That was good great. Good. No, All right, right let's roll. Good. Scott, you, you, you want to do our usual introduce, and then I'll tell you. Okay. You got to do it. Well, today, we're going to uh, talk about. I don't know who the guy is. I can't remember. Oh, yeah. You just say we got three murderers, two murderers, whatever, and I'll go from there. Okay. okay. Great. I'll talk to you. All right, well, well, so should we introduce ourselves? Yeah, guys, this is how it really works. This is what we really, yes, what we really do. So, except we're looking at each other on there. Chase yeah, is not. looking at himself, but we look at each other. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of that going on, too. Okay, so I'm Scott Rouse, from Body Language Expert now. It's a trained law enforcement military and, uh, what is it, interrogation and body language. Mark? Uh, I'm Mark Bowden. I'm an expert in human behavior and body language. I help people all over the world to stand out, win trust, gain credibility every time they communicate, including some of the leaders of the G7. Chase. Hey, I'm Chase Hughes. I did 20 years in the U.S. military. I'm a neuroscientist. I train intelligence agencies and the general public in persuasion, influence, and behavior profiling. Greg? I'm Greg Hartley. I'm a former Army interrogator, interrogation re instructor, resistance to interrogation instructor, and I've written 10 books on body language and behavior. I, hang on just a second, Mark. You're going to use it again. Yours is too loud. If you come down just a little bit, knock your. This is always what we're doing. About 3 dB. <laughs> yeah, okay. Are you sure my yeah, light's I'll, okay? I'll, Do you I'll, see that? I'll, I'll turn mine down. Okay. okay. I'll, mine okay. Down. I'll keep there the first go. part. Hey, can you down. guys hear my air conditioner? <laughs> yeah. Well, not. Wait a minute. Hang on. Everybody, no. everybody okay. hold. Hold. This is our show. <laughs> yeah, I can hear it back there. I think it'll be okay, though. That's a 22. Whose dog is that? That's Mila. Sorry, I got a letter back down. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, first video. Right, here we go. You, ready? you want to talk about what we're doing and then wait a minute. All right, ready? Here we go. All right, well, today we're going to talk about these people. I don't know who they are yet. Uh, I'm going to throw it to Greg. Uh, I like, shouldn't do it that way. Let me just say this. Okay, hang on. So me, me, this is exactly how it happens every okay, time. Yeah. Because yeah. I get, I get, I've said this before, so I'm going to say it again. Because I don't, yeah, I get the shits and giggles. I don't like to cuss, but I'm going to say it it's the second time there third time here, I do get the shits and giggles when we do this because it's real quiet. Everybody's looking at me like, now watch. And I get the shits and giggles. Okay. And it's because of Mark, I think. And then Chase will do something. Then I'll start laughing. Then I'll get after Chase and Chase will get all calmed down. Then Greg will straighten us out and Mark goes, all right, fellas, let's go. And then I go like this. Here we go. Let's go. Okay. Hang on. <laughs> that happens too. All right. Well, today we're going to talk about a mur uh, suspected murderer, a couple of them, if we get far enough in them. And we're going to tell you what we think about what we see in their body language. And let's see what you think about it. Greg, tell us about the videos we're going to yeah, watch. Yeah, there are three separate cases. The first one is a guy named Stephen McDaniel, if you've ever seen him, from Georgia. Kind of a, makes me so proud to be in, from, from Georgia. The second one is a guy named, I don't remember the guy's name. Oh, and they found a it. dead body behind his house. The third one is Ian Huntley from England. Those are what we're talking about. All these people are talking to reporters. Nobody knows that they've done anything yet. All right, you ready? Yeah. Here we go. Oh, well, maybe not. You get that not, lean, Scott. This, is, uh, this is something I'll probably keep for the rest of my life, I think. Um, it's what Holly gave me on the last day of term. She was very, very upset because I didn't get my job. And that's the kind of girl she was. She was just lovely. Really lovely. That's really very sweet, isn't it? Yeah. 
All right. Well, and it was just afterwards when we. Right then, I would stop that and go, dudes, we're, we're looking at the wrong video. These are the, yep. This is the last half of the video. This is the last. So we'll start with this one. We'll start here. I, I don't know who this, this is, but apparently she's. Do you want a data point? You this got is it? the girlfriend of the guy who murdered two young girls, and she apparently knew about it, and she was interviewed. Nobody even knows the girls are dead yet. So there you go. Okay. She does. All right. Apparently. Hang on a second. Ready? All right. Here we go. Chase, what do you got? Well, right away, we're seeing some eye contact avoidance. Her eyes are going down and left, which most of us will associate with some uh, emotional accessing, which you guys learned uh, from a lot of Greg's training. There's a couple of the things that we're seeing here that she's avoiding eye contact during these critical moments. And if you look when she's handling that note, her nails are bitten down to the nub. We've never seen this video before. And you can see a large lip retraction. She sucks the lip into the mouth, which we typically associate with a need for reassurance. And if you watch that again, that's at a very critical moment that might suggest some guilt. It's really very sweet, isn't it? Yeah. Scott, what do you got? Uh, the main thing that struck me in this was she talked about the girl in the past tense. She said she was this. She was this kind of girl that did this or that. At the same time, I agree with you, Chase, because we're not, she's, we're not seeing the eye count, contact we should be seeing, although she is looking at this little note or whatever. She's using that as a barrier between them. See how that shoulder's up and she's leaning this way? Although it's not a full-on barrier sideways, we see that barrier coming around this way. Shoulder's up a little bit. That, that, lets us, that indicates we're probably looking at some tension there. Uh, she's worried a little bit. I'm not, I'm not going to eat everything up. Mark, what do you got? Uh, yeah. So, uh, so what interests me is, is she looks really quite well-groomed for this situation. Um, they're self-grooming there, the cross outside rather than inside. I would think that cross would go inside rather than outside. So I'm wondering, has she placed it outside there? I think we definitely see some kind of disdain, maybe, and also with a, with a flick there, which, which I would call a feint, which is to kind of say, hey, uh, you know, look how well-groomed I am. Pay no attention to, uh, thank you. Pay no attention. I have to use my hands, you see. So I was like, I'm not holding a, a mic. I get you. I'm not holding my. Look at that. I'm in stereo now. That's amazing. I get you. That's amazing. what we need. That's beautiful. I got you, boo. That's beautiful sound. That's beautiful sound. And, and look where it lands there. Look where it, where it lands there. Is, is that somebody who's suffering loss, or is that somebody who's almost in a well a constant state of disdain? I know it's it's frozen frame, but I wouldn't even expect that to be on somebody's face in her position yeah anyway there we go uh greg what do you got yeah i think she went to amber heard school of acting you can see her <laughs> snarl lip she does the i'm just a girl she uncovers her ear and you may say it's because her hair is blowing but her hair is still blowing she doesn't do it again i think it's a comforting move as she does this she also as you said chase she said was she was a nice girl by the way this girl was the teacher of one of these kids and she does the lip pursing of disapproval. That's good enough for me. I think we got plenty to say. Hmm. Let's talk to her. All right. Yeah. All right. What's next? They were here at 6.15. Well, we have an eyewitness. Ian Huntley here is a familiar figure. Evening, Ian. You're the school caretaker. The girls, Jessica and Holly, would know you. And they saw you on the front doorstep. What, what went on? The girl, I don't know the girls. Um, I stood on the front doorstep grooming my dog down. She'd run away and come back a bit of a mess. Um, they just came across and asked how Miss Carr was, as she used to teach them at St Andrews. Um, I just said she weren't very good as she hadn't got the job. And they just says, please tell her that we're very sorry. And uh, off the walk in the direction of the, um, the library over there. All right, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, first of all, guys, look at that pronounced grief muscle. Why does he have a grief muscle? These are not, if he doesn't know these little girls, yeah, it's sad when a little kid goes missing, but I don't sit around with a grief muscle, number one. Uh, number two, I watch his speech patterns. They change when he says they went off in the direction of, uh, and his hand points off, and he stammers. And uh, off the walk in the direction of the, um, the library over there. There's also some little smirk there in his lips. I, I would be crawling all over this guy over that very thing right there, that grief muscle. Why is this such a big deal? And he edits as he's speaking. So he starts off saying the girls. Oh, I don't know the girls. The girl, I don't know the girls. There's an inject of information that we really don't need. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, why is he willing to be choreographed? Like that's clearly a choreographed, okay, so what I want you to do is kind of move into shot and start walking into shot. He seems really comfortable with that. Uh, if he was really concerned about these kids, I think this is concern for the kids, I wouldn't expect that kind of ambling walk 
that he's got right there. In fact, I would suspect he wouldn't take direction very, very well. And his concentration would be over his shoulder where, where the kids, where he's been told, oh, you know, and then point out later on where they went. But his head keeps turning to that house there. So I'm wondering, I don't really know this case, but I'm wondering, did something happen in the house? Is he pointing us out to where something happened rather than where he's saying it happened over there? Anyway, just, just some thoughts. Chase, what do you got? Yeah, so we see one thing that we're seeing a lot of guilty people is this stiff rigidity of behavior. And it's not just that it's because he's on camera. So a lot of this, you see that the walk is a little bit comfortable, which helps us to understand he should be a little more comfortable here if he was innocent. So he's comfortable being on camera the moment he's being questioned, he stiffens up. So we have a nice, luxurious stroll into the camera here. We also see this rigidity on the face. And Mark, I'm with you. His, his head is pointing over and leaning at that house during these very critical points when he's talking about it. And he's pointing away from here. He's not willing to talk about the girls. We have high detail about non-relevant items. And we have low detail about relevant items. So we have a detail spike and detail valley at very critical points that suggest guilt. Scott, what do you got? I agree with you 100%. Because right there, he's been asked to stand there. When I walk up, you walk toward the camera, we'll start talking, right? So I think that's one of the reasons he feels so odd when we're seeing that rigidity. However, right here, what you're seeing is someone trying to keep a face they're thinking of. They're trying, in other words, when you talk about do, uh, having a resting face, he's trying to act like nothing's wrong. However, you do see the grief muscle up there. See there at the top? Right there, you can see it's really, really big at that point. Now, we're not seeing a whole lot of blinking. A lot of times what we equate that with is, is the person who's not being honest, wants to keep their eye on you to make sure you believe him. Watch when he turns around, see how big his eyes are at that point? That's the largest they were. He turned around, his eyes were really big. That's a big redirect from where he is right now. I agree with you guys on that. Um, at the same time, um, I think the rigidity is, is not only, now watch this, see him walk up. He's trying to be cool and stand there like that. That little smile comes up and goes away. Now he's worried. Watch his, watch his, eye, his blink rate. It's almost nothing at this point as he looks. There's where the grief muscle kicks in. And he's looking away from the guys he's talking. He can't quite back up enough, but we see him back up just a little bit as he starts talking. I've never seen someone who was telling the truth. That, little, that short little shoulder shrug right there on his, uh, over here on, on his right, our left. When it goes up, if the chin is that way, Personally, I've never seen somebody who was telling the truth to do that when you ask them a question, something specific like that. When they say that, they can shoulder shrug all they want to and all that, but when the chin goes to it, that bothers me every time. So I really zone in on that. So I'm going to, if that's, that really bothers me, I'd like, you're right, Greg, I'd like that guy up like I'm, whoops, got to watch my language. We're, As a be. quick note, when yep. we're talking about grief muscles here, we usually use grief muscle to see truth telling. And right here, uh, this is a difference in the style of questioning, the type of person asking, why they're being asked the question. Murderers can feel bad about the victims as well. And I think especially when there are children involved, that's when you're more likely to see grief. There's more guilt associated with it. Yeah, and, and grief can be because they know they're about to be discovered as well. There's all kinds of reasons for grief. But that arching, guys, when we talk about that, it's a cluster of five muscles. Pull that together. It doesn't... There, and real, all it really is, is is that little cluster of muscles doesn't mean for sure there's grief or anything like that. But that's what we always associate it with, is that little upside-down horseshoe. You know, you, it, basically, it's just a cluster of muscles right there that squished together. And um, Darwin and Duchesne wrote about that in the 1800s. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Let's go. You got we good? Yeah. All right. Let's go to the next one. This guy makes me so proud to be from Georgia. The last time anyone heard from her was an email that she sent out, and... I, no one's heard from her since. Did you see her hang out with anyone at the time, anything like that? I mean, no, no, no one has seen her since Saturday. I haven't seen anything. I mean, you always hear noise outside, but it's just people walking by pretty much. And you, uh, she just recently graduated from Mercer? Yeah, she and I, were, we were both JD students. Um, we graduated back in May. What kind of person was she? I mean, how did you, what did you see? Her? I mean, she's as nice as can be. I mean, very personable, very much a people person. Do you know anybody that, any enemies she might have had, somebody that might want to hurt her? No, I mean, we're, we don't know where she is. I mean, the only thing we can think is that maybe she went out running and someone snatched her. Because, I mean, we went, at, we went over, one of her friends had a key, we went inside and tried to see if there was anything amiss, but... 
I mean, she had a door jam that was sitting right by it, so there was no sign that anyone broke in. I mean, the door was locked when everyone got here. I mean, we, we just don't know where she is. What about... Um Okay, quickly before we start, this story is this kid was a, would you hire him as a lawyer, first question, because he's, he's a JD who just graduated and is about to take the bar. She was a neighbor, he broke in, sexually assaulted her, killed her, dismembered her, and got rid of her. Yeah, Horrible guy. He's in jail forever. All right, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, I'm just going to say one thing about this, which is, so Rudolf Laban, who I talked about earlier, uh, in the 1920s, um, started trying to uh, describe movement and, and create a model of it. And part of that model was around being direct or indirect. Direct or indirect. And I want you to look at this video and think, is he direct or is he indirect? Or is he very indirect? Does his direction keep changing so it kind of feels indirect at the moment? Is he kind of flowing like direct water or is it like scattering all over the place? For such simple questions and such a simple situation which is hey tell me about you know tell me about this this is super indirect so that just causes concern for me why can't he just be really clear really direct around some simple simple questions look at those 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 they're just indirect 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 instead of instead of pointed 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 straight head clear focus very unfocused uh scott what do you got all right uh, this really bothers me because he's talking about other people quite often in this. We went and did this. We look for We don't know what to think. Quite often when someone, uh, well, you can see it here, I guess, somebody kills somebody, what you'll hear is this. Uh, the, per the person won't find them by themselves. They'll have killed the person, left them in the, the living room or the bathtub or something, and, and they'll get someone to go with them to find them. When they find, oh, I found it. They won't say, I found a body. They'll say, my neighbor and I found a body. I went and got him, and they went in there with me. That's what he's doing verbally there. He's adding people to this story. So it looks like he's surrounded by people, and there's no way he, he would have been able to do that. That huge grief muscle that just clicks right on right there. That lets us know there's something, something's up, and he's starting to get worried here. He keeps, he's redirecting everything away from himself to a group and putting himself in a group. We couldn't find, we did this, she and I did something. It's never, well, there's a couple of times that say, I did this or I did that, but it's very, very thin, very thin. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, Mark, I know why he's doing this, because when you're Gandalf, you got a spell cast. You know, he's kind of doing that because it goes with a persona. But if you watch him, what he's doing is he is not asking for help. Not one time has he said, hey, this is my friend. She's been missing for the... If you lost your dog tomorrow morning, you wouldn't go out and say, I went home last night and opened the door and my, and my little dog wasn't there. And then some friends came over and they saw my little dog wasn't... That's BS. We would say, hey, this is my friend. Here's what she looks like. We always say this. Here's what she looks like. Help us find her. He doesn't do that. He team he uses team pronouns, as, as Chase would call her, what I call blame sharing. We, 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 we. And there's a whole lot of stuff there. And he said, when everyone arrived, hmm, that's an odd choice of words to me. So I would go after that when everyone arrived immediately. And that grief muscle is just screaming, screaming there. And he does a lip pursing once and a withdrawal the other time, meaning drawing back. When he said, does she have any enemies? No. Hmm, interesting. Those are two places I would, I would go after him pretty hard. Chase, what do you got? Dude, yeah, dude, yeah, the mic is moving. <laughs> edit that out, please. Okay, there you go. Yeah, I'll, I'll take care. Nobody's going to see it. I it makes me look stupid. <laughs> I know. He's going to dub over you later, don't worry. <laughs> All right, so we're seeing rapid jerky movements back and forth. We're seeing these confirmation glances. And one thing that makes it not really a confirmation glance is threat checking. He's checking which one do I need to pay the most attention to because which one is going to punish me the most, which one has the capacity to damage me the most. One incredible question to ask in these scenarios for any news reporter that ever sees this, a simple three word question that will throw off anyone guilty and make anyone innocent just confused and say, what? Here it is. Are you nervous? And the way that somebody answers that question will just reveal just about whatever you need. And an innocent person is going to go, what? No. I want to find my friend. So we see a lot of that here. We see injection of ambiguity. That's one of those things we talk about very regularly. I'm inserting ambiguity in here to 
confuse or conflate a lot of the facts around the investigation. Again, not asking for help for the friends, but this rapid jerky movement, if he's looking away and the other person starts talking, instantly rapid redirect his eye contact back to the person talking. This is a person that's pre fight or flight behavior right here. I'm checking immediately when someone starts talking because I'm fearful of what is coming from that person. That's a potential hey guys, threat. I always say this is try to make him smaller, Let's try to make him tighter. Greg, your line. Always going up. No, you, now you say. Guys, let's just do what we do. Yeah, I, every time. Just, let's just do what we do. Come on. Okay. Let's not change it. All right. <laughs> let's see what's next. Okay. Same guy, hopefully. What about um, in the, like, the parking lot area? I know they've been doing a lot of, I think that's where they have recovered the body or whatever they recovered from there. Body? Um, had you heard, any, had you seen anything there? Had you seen anything there? I, I mean, we don't know if this is the same person. You know what I mean? Like, they took out a body there earlier. We don't know if it's the same person or not. So that's how we're trying to ask people if they know who lived there. Are you okay, sir? I think I need to sit down. Okay. Wow, that's too bad. All right, uh, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, I'll keep this one really short. There's nothing like the guy getting discovered right there. See his face go slack in terror. You see, we talk about fight or flight. You see his pale, he goes pale as he can be. His lips are drawing. Everything is starting to happen to him for respiration. Watch everything going on here. This is one of those moments that we very rarely get to see on TV. And he, he just realizes the gig is up. Look at his blink rate. Everything we've taught you about all this. You don't need an R or an S here. You just need to go, okay, this guy's done something. Something's wrong. That apprehension, that deep breath. And whether you think he's trying to fake it so that he's faking surprise. He's not faking surprise. He's like the, uh-oh, I thought I, I hit her better than that. That's what it is. Chase, what do you got? If you go back, uh, when you start last watching thing, this. Last thing. <laughs> I had to do that. <laughs> he's doing the squirrel in the road right here. So. And then I have to edit out Greg talking over to Chase. Okay, ready? Here we go. Every episode. Okay, Greg, you want to bring him back in? Greg, Greg, we got to do it again, so Scott can okay. edit that out. Yeah, I got it. You ready? Here we go. Chase, what do you got? Oh, thanks, Greg. <laughs> you can see at the beginning of the video, the lips are pink. End of the video, lips are white. There you go. You can see lips right there. Blood starts leaving. His head's going to come down right now. Boom, chin dropping. This is a little bit of throat protective behavior. So right at that moment, the mention of body right there, there's fear. One interesting thing, if you believe in energy or anything like that, the moment this happens, that dog's tail stops wagging and he climbs under that car. Pretty strange. So that's what we're seeing, fight or flight, blood is leaving the face. And if you believe in that energy stuff, you're seeing it. Scott, what do you got? All right, yeah, so, but you know what, dudes? I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of go against you on a little bit of this. I think we're seeing a combination of, of fake and real. It hits him and he goes, yeah, this, they know, they, they found her, you know, so there's going to be problems. That's why we're seeing that part. But this other part where he does that fake step back coming up. Oh, yeah. Here it comes. Yep. Like, oh, my gosh, I'm just so, I'm shocked. See how shocked I am? I've got to go sit down. The head goes back up and watch him turn. Look at his eyes. He's looking right at her. His eyes wide and look right at her. And that fake, st I, th I think that's, I think that's fake. I think it's a mix. The first part of it, I agree with you, is real. But I think from there on, he goes, okay, watch, well, here we go. And then, oh, yeah, I'm shocked. I'm aghast at what's happening. That'd be the only thing I'd focus on. I'd, I'd get after him for that. That's where I'd climb up his hand. He forgets that. sadness, too. Yeah. That's true. That's yeah. true. Grief, everything else is yeah. the, uh oh, oh, poor me. Okay, we good? Uh, Mark. Oh, Mark. Sorry about that. Okay, one more time. Hang on a second. This happens all Okay, Mark, what do you got? Uh, yeah. So, uh, so, Chase, I want to pick up further on what you're talking about the dog under there. So in the 1960s, Sir David Attenborough made a film of Oliver Twist. And there's a moment in that film where Bill Sykes goes into a room and kills Nancy. What Attenborough did was to show you the reaction of the dog during that, the reaction of the dog. And the dog scrabbles at the door. And when the murder happens, then goes away. It was, one of the, it was a, a, a brilliant piece of filmmaking and changed, number one, uh, the way that you can show violence by showing you the effect on something else. So I think it's brilliant that you, you pick up on, on that. And I think we're partly primed as well to pick up on the, on the, on, 
on, because of that film and because of other films since that, on the reactions of other objects, other, other things, other people in the room to a, to a very threatening moment. But regardless of all of that, that expression just there is such a mix of the, like the eyes are almost rolling back, the, the, the mouth has dropped, he's become very, very still. But I'm kind of with you, Scott, in that it's, it's such a bizarre mixture. Either that I'm going there's, a, there's a, an extreme kind of neurological problem at that point, or he is taking uh, the, what's really happening in his mind and mashing it up with some kind of acting going on at the same time. So I, I, I think it is, a, it is a mashup going on there, which is why it looks so odd. It looks beyond any other faint response that I've seen. I think if it, it was a real faint response, he'd have gone to the ground right now. With those eyes rolling back, I'd be going, okay, you're going to hit... Because I thought, I thought, oh, he's going to hit the ground. He's going to hit the ground. Oh, no, hang on. No, he isn't going to hit the ground. Hang on, he's in control of his faint response. Well, I'm a bit con concerned about that then, because... He shouldn't be in control of that response right now. Anyway, that's all I got on that one. Okay, has anybody got a hard out on this? Anybody got a hard time thinking of be somewhere else? Hard uh, quit, no, time. No, keep not today. Keep, keep going? going. Uh, keep going. Yeah, yeah I can Let's keep, keep going. going. Let's okay. keep going all day. Do we have another one? Yeah, I no one had seen her since Saturday because I we all just, there's not a whole lot of interaction unless we're doing classes. Right. And she was doing the uh, online version of it. You all so, studied together, though? I, no. I, we were in, there's it's two different people, that there's two companies that provide it. Captain provides it and Barbary provides it. I signed up with Barbary and I've been doing the lectures that they have in the mornings. She was doing the Kaplan online, so I hardly ever saw her. All right, uh, Chase, what do you got? So right away, we're seeing this um, this occurring. You know, in the last video, we saw a lot of palm and wrist exposure. Every single gesture here is palms toward the body, a little more protective. I think he enjoys this hair in front of his face. He makes no effort to get it out of his face. I think it's helpful for him. It's covering up his face. We can do anything to cover our face when we're in a, in a point of crisis that we possibly can. He's looking down and to his right in this video which suggests that he's just rehearsed all of this stuff or he's rehearsing this mentally while he's saying this stuff. In the last video, when he was uh, using a lot of this language, you'd see him close his mouth a little bit more. Now he's probably less comfortable with this, talking about his relationship with the person who's deceased. Mouth doesn't close very much. It stays open between a lot of these. We see the breathing rate is in the chest, not the abdomen here. So you can see the chest rising and falling. Just looking at that T-shirt right there. So we're seeing that go up. It's the first time we've any of us have seen this video. Here. Uh, so, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, when someone's gesturing and they're doing all this stuff with their hands, we expect their elbows to rise away. There's one time it does. The rest of the time, he's doing this, like his arms are tied. His elbows are to his side. Remember, I talked to you about exoskeleton all the time. When a person is feeling fight or flight and they close their elbows near their torso to protect that soft white underbelly, because we're the only animals dumb enough to expose that. That's what he's doing. And look at that respiration, as you said, Chase. He's just, I mean, he, he still looks like some Lord of the Rings character, but aside from that, if you keep watching him, his hands are coming up. He's trying to convey some message that he's pre-prepared, and he's iterative storytelling. You can't miss it. We, he's using those team pronouns again. He's using things to try to make it sound like, well, she was doing this. Too much information about which tests she was taking and the reason why he has not seen her. And in fact, probably the reason he knew is because he's looking through her window. Scott, what do you got? Yeah. I'd climb up beside him and see, sort of, sort of, I'm sorry, fellas. I would, uh, I'd go in uh, after he says, when she asked ask him about what she's doing and he's doing, are you doing something together? He said, no, she's, and he started shaking his head no, then started telling about all the things he's doing online. That's all I talked about pretty much after that. You all so, studied together, though? I, no, I, we were in, there's, there's two different people, that, there's two companies that provide it. Captain provides it and Barbary provides it. I signed up with Barbary and I've been doing the lectures that they have in the mornings. She was doing the Kaplan online. So that he's separating himself from her again, using all the we's and all that stuff. I got nothing else to add to that because that's where I would, I would start right then at that point. Mark, what do you got? Uh, yeah, um, look, he is, I, I can't even work out how you managed to work out what he's saying. Because I'm from Georgia. Follow it at all 
at all. I mean, and I don't think it's just that. We can't understand you half the time. Yeah. What do you mean? Speaking the Queen's English, flipping heck. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> yeah, look, it's, it's all over the place at the moment, all over the place. Again, let me go back to that, that Laban idea. Uh, is he flowing like water? When I, I tend to see people telling the truth, it tends to flow like water, okay? Or is it like ice and is it indirect? Is it direct water or is it indirect ice at the moment? For me, that's indirect ice. Look at it, it's like, it's like jagged, it's like... Uh, it's, and, and that's why I can't work out what he's, what he's saying. If I start to m mirror his, those, the, those movements, I can't even get words out, which means I think he's under huge cognitive load right now. I don't think he knows what on earth is going on. He's got no plan at the moment. If he was really looking for his friend, you have a plan. The camera's there, the mic's there, you've got an interviewer, what's your plan? Let me tell you, let me give you all the information I can in as clear a way as possible. He's not capable of, capable of that, something's going on, for sure. All right, is that everybody? Good. Yeah. All right, good. Um, we got ten minutes or five minutes left, I think? Or 14 minutes. You want to wait, do one more and then we'll take questions? Do one more. Yeah. Okay, all right, great. Yeah, we'll do one more, if we have one more. I would see you like go out running. But I'm, what time would you go out running? I I don't even know when. I, at night or morning? I, I saw her like midday a couple weeks ago. I mean, that was the last time I saw her was coming back from the bar prep on the main campus because we got moved over there for a week or two. But she normally would run. That was yeah, the I mean, she she ran all the time. I mean, she she had a group that she would go running with. I, mean, I, I don't know anyone that would want to hurt her. She was as nice a person as there is. Was she moving soon? Did you know anything about her? Yeah, yeah. She she was going to be moving out uh, today. She was supposed to move out today because someone else was going to be moving into her apartment in New Boston. I'll go first on this one. For somebody who doesn't know her very well, he sure does hang out with her a lot and knows her schedule and what she's doing and all those types of things. I'd go in on that. When you heard Jace make that sound, do the sound again, Chase. <laughs> Usually when we come back from whatever we're watching, whatever the funniest sound is, Chase nails it every time there's something good. What was the girl? That, and I always do it while we're, uh, that's while we're in between screen, when yeah. you guys can't see it. Yeah. Yeah. Almost every video. That's what we're laughing about half the time. Yeah. <laughs> when we come back, somebody's made a noise or something. Yeah, so that's where I'd start. I'm right there. And I, I, I'll suck up everything because there's not tons of stuff. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, I'll keep this one really short. <laughs> this was, if you look at him, he's got his chin down to protect his throat. I think he's running out of load. He has very little capacity left. I ain't that thing he's doing. Imagine your attorney being that guy. He's under stress. This is my cousin Vinny attorney, you know. He gets up there and he starts stammering and doing stupid stuff. He's shaking his head. He's got a story he's trying to pitch out. And he's, his, his ability to deliver that story is gone because his little brain is like a squirrel on the road running back and forth. That's what I got. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, this is interesting for me because... Uh, thank you for this, Scott. This is really, You see, I have to move. I got you, boo. To move these things. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I used to get people to hyperventilate on purpose as a, as a stress test if I'm training them and I'm training them to do a, a public speech and I know they're going under, or an interview, they're going into a high stress situation. I'll get them to hyperventilate and then deliver with technique because you want to stress test it as much as you can. Uh, it's really hard to get people to hyperventilate on purpose. Yeah, They stop themselves really fast because the body's not designed to do that. He does the same. He's trying to hyperventilate on purpose. You'll see it. He does about three. He goes... <sighs> I, uh... And by the third, like I was saying this morning, by about the third breath, you get enough of a change, okay? The, the, the endocrine system starts to buzz different, uh, different chemicals around him, and, he, and his body goes, oh, okay, and actually, no, I don't want to do that, because I'll be too out of control, because he wants to be in control. When you really, who here has hyperventilated before? Anybody, anybody done that? When you start, if you're doing it for real, can you stop yourself? No. No, if you start to hyperventilate, you can't stop yourself. Yeah, you're now into a, into a pattern. 
he stops himself. You can't stop that breathing if you're really in that emotional state. He's not in that emotional state. He's acting. There. Uh, Chase, what do you got? Uh, I, would, I would venture to say he's, this is a kid with social anxiety, most likely, off before any of this happened. And so that might explain some of the rapidity of some of these movements. But a person with social anxiety experiencing real hyperventilation, real grief, real extreme freakouts would do immediately whatever they could to get away from the camera, hmm. not to make sure that it's displayed to the camera. That's all I got. Jim, what question would you ask this guy? If you had one question to ask, ask that guy, what would you ask right now? Well, I, I, I would still go back and try to reestablish the story. When did you last see her? And he'd have to respond with a lie if, he, if he's trying to cover. Or, again, see if that changes his storytelling. Or, of course, he's selling and not telling. But uh, I just want to revisit, you know, uh, when did you last see her? And see where he goes for his accessing and stuff like that. Excellent. Thank you, man. Yep. I can't believe we got him here and get him to do that. I mean, did you see what I did? Okay. All right. Well, let's, in 30 seconds or less, let's talk about what we think we've seen. And we'll go around the room and uh, I'll wrap it up. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, I, I, I just loved seeing that dog. <laughs> you know, reminded me of Peach uh, a little bit. Uh, but isn't it interesting how, you know, we home in on other living things within an environment as, as kind of a, a Rorschach test for the emotions that might be feed. Do dogs don't have emotions like human beings. They just, I know we think they do, but I, I don't think they can. And so we tend to project our own emotions or the emotions of other people onto them. And that's why they get so much love from us because, uh, because they're kind of a, a, an avatar uh, for that. But, uh, but lovely to see, see that. Thanks for bringing that up, uh, Chase. Chase, what do you think anyway? Yeah, so look, anytime we're seeing anybody do any of these, we do a lot of these. My number one or two, top two things that I look for, where, where is the detail and where is the absence of detail? That will get you halfway there most of the time. Second thing I'm looking for is this person's story focused on solving whatever problem has been caused or focused on their story and their innocence. And here's the, here's the caveat to that. If it's, they're just kind of a witness. So like I was driving by the Circle K when the murder happened. I have no idea who the murderer is. They're trying to volunteer as much information as possible, and they're not making the story about themselves. They're saying, it's 5 p.m., I was driving past the, past the gas station, and I, all I saw were a couple of lights out. <laughs> so trying to give some information about what's going on. So that would be the caveat there. That was uh, Greg's cousin. Greg? <laughs> no, that, my cousin's not that articulate. Yeah. So, so I would say, wrapping all those things together, if we, call, if we took the concept of clearing versus steering, when you've got a friend who's missing, a dog who's missing, or something else, you steer to try to find that person. When you're, all your details are about clearing your name and you're bringing in every resource you can, adding details to the back to protect yourself, you're probably involved. And if you look at two of the three people had grief muscle in people that they are not necessarily tightly associated with. So I think pretty good indicator, and we know that all those bodies were recovered and those people were found guilty. That's all I got. Right. Well, to me, it looks like that I think we're seeing a great study here and people are standing as they're being questioned. And if they've done something they're not supposed to be doing and they've been asked about it, because we're getting to see bigger movement and they can move forward and they can move back a little bit more easily than someone sitting down. Also, I think it's a great study in the quote unquote grief muscle as we see that on there. So two different guys, two different grief muscles, one more pronounced than the second guy than the first guy and a lot of redirection in both of them. So I think it's a great study in not only the standing and the grief muscle, but it's almost a little class in redirection, especially with the second guy, because he was never there. He was never around her. It was always we, us. And then the first guy was talking about how it happened. He, the last time we saw him, they went around the other way. So I think that's a great little lesson in that. All right, well, I think it's a good one, fellas, and we'll see you next time. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. <laughs> oh, that. Thanks.